Good evening. You came back. We are glad you are here for Advent 3 Midweek Worship. Tonight's theme is joy. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joy is light, a heavenly glory, loving glow on God's own face. You who see creation story shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts on you. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, Set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice. Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ, lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. Our scripture for this evening from the Old Testament is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11. Like a branch that sprouts from a stump, someone from David's family will soon day be king. And the Spirit of the Lord will be with him to give him wisdom and understanding and insight. He will be powerful, and he will know and honor the Lord. His greatest joy will be to obey the Lord. The king won't judge by appearances or listen to rumors. The poor and the needy will be treated with fairness and with justice. His word will be law everywhere in the land. Honesty and fairness will be his royal robes. Leopards will lie down with young goats and wolves will rest with lambs. Calves and lions will eat together and be cared for by little children. Cows and bears shall share the same pasture and their young will rest side by side. Lions and oxen will both eat straw. Little children will play near snake holes, and they will stick their hands into dens of poisonous snakes and never be hurt. Nothing harmful will take place on the Lord's holy mountain. Just as water fills the sea, the land will be filled with people who know and honor the Lord. The Gospel from Isaiah. From John chapter 15, the message version. Jesus said, I have told you these things for a purpose, that my joy may be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. 
I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. Being in a good mood is really great, and most languages have lots of words to describe the experience, like happy, cheerful, joyful, and so on. The same goes for the languages of the Bible. In ancient biblical Hebrew, there's a variety of words, like simcha, sason, or gil. In the Greek New Testament, there's kara, euphersune, or agaliasis. Each word has its own unique nuance, but they all basically refer to the feeling of joy and happiness. Now what makes these biblical joy words interesting is noticing the kinds of things that bring happiness and also seeing how joy is a key theme that runs through the whole story of the Bible. Let's start with sources of joy. On page one of the Bible, God says that this world is very good. And so naturally, people find joy in beautiful and good things of life, like growing flocks or an abundant harvest on the hills. The poet of Psalm 104 says a good bottle of wine is God's gift to bring joy to people's hearts. People find joy at a wedding or in their children. There's even a Hebrew proverb that compares the joy that perfume brings to your nose with the joy a good friend brings to your heart. However, human history isn't just a joy fest. The biblical story shows how we live in a world that's been corrupted by our own selfishness. It's marked by death and loss. And this is where biblical faith offers a unique perspective on joy. It's an attitude God's people adopt, not because of happy circumstances, but because of their hope in God's love and promise. So when the Israelites were suffering from slavery in Egypt, God raised up Moses to lead them into freedom. And the first thing the Israelites did was sing for joy. Even though they were in the middle of a desert, they were vulnerable, the promised land was still far away, they rejoiced anyway. Later biblical poets looked back on this story and they remembered how the Lord caused his people to leave with joy, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. This joy in the wilderness, this was a defining moment, a way of saying that the joy of God's people is not determined by their struggles, but by their future destiny. This theme appears later in Israel's story, when Israel suffered under the oppression of foreign empires. The prophet Isaiah looked for a day when God would raise up a new deliverer like Moses. That's when those redeemed by the Lord will return to Zion with glad shouts, with eternal joy crowning their heads. Happiness and joy will overtake them. And while the Israelites waited, they chose joy to anticipate their future redemption. This is why it's significant that when Jesus of Nazareth was born, it was announced as good news that brings great joy. We're told that Jesus himself rejoiced and gave thanks to God his Father when he began to announce the kingdom of God. He even taught his followers the same joy in the wilderness, saying, when people reject you or persecute you for following me, rejoice, be very glad, because your reward is great in heaven. After his death and resurrection, Jesus commissioned his followers to go out and announce the good news that he was the risen king of the world. And as they did so, the early Christian communities were known for being full of joy, even when they were persecuted. Like when the apostle Paul was sitting in a dirty Roman prison, he could say that he's chosen joy, even if he gets executed. He called this the joy of faith or joy in the Lord. He believed it was the gift of God's spirit, a sign that Jesus' presence is with you, inspiring hope in the midst of hardship. And when you believe that Jesus' love has overcome death itself, joy becomes reasonable in the darkest of circumstances. Now, this doesn't mean that you ignore or suppress your sorrow. That's not healthy or necessary. Paul often expressed his grief about missing loved ones or losing friends or his own freedom. He called it being full of sorrow and yet rejoicing. As he acknowledged his pain, he also made a choice to trust Jesus that his loss wouldn't be the final word. This is very different from the trite advice to turn that frown upside down. Christian joy is a profound decision of faith and hope in the power of Jesus' own life and love. And that's what biblical joy is all about. Joy. What a thing to think about in this season when we are scurrying around in a big hurry to get ready for Christmas and dealing with all the changes that have come with the COVID-19 epidemic. Joy. Joy can come on Christmas morning when everything comes together and if your relative doesn't find something to criticize about the gift you gave them. Joy can come when we're together with relatives and friends provided nobody brings up 
politics. But joy for me is something that's hard to achieve. The Dalai Lama said, since we create our own sorrow, we ought to have the ability to create our own joy. And I do agree with him that joy comes from inside us, but I'm not altogether sure that we can create it on our own. Dr. Christian Stenick is not somebody that I know, but I like what he said. He said that the difference between happiness and joy is God. The great C.S. Lewis, the English scholar and professor said, joy bursts in our lives when we go about doing the good at hand and not trying to manipulate things and times to achieve joy. He wrote a whole book about joy entitled Surprised by Joy, and I have not read it all, but I certainly do love the selections that I have read from it. He also wrote this, if you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to be wet, you must get into the water. If you want joy, power, peace, eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. They are not the sort of prize which God could, if he chose, just hand out to anyone. But I think we can, if we allow the Holy Spirit alive within us, to develop joy that we can't achieve on our own. Lewis finally says, all joy reminds. It is never a possession, it's always a desire for something longer ago or further away or still about to be. Let's see what we can do this season to sit still, to listen for the voice of God, to allow the Holy Spirit to help create joy in us. May joy be with you. Will you join me in prayer? God of heaven and earth, you sent your angels as messengers to your servants, bringing news of comfort and joy, of your plan to heal a world gone astray. Bringing, bringing news, news of Emmanuel, Emmanuel God, God with, with us. us. To Mary, you sent a message of your favor. You chose her to carry and give birth to Jesus. The, the Son, Son of the, the Most, Most High. High. To Joseph, the angel gave assurance that Mary's son was from God and should be named Jesus. Because, because he, would he would save, save us, us from, from our, our sins. sins. To shepherds among their flocks, angels brought good news of great joy that will be for all people. A, A Savior, Savior has, has been, been born, born to us. us. He, he is, is the Messiah, Messiah the, Lord. the Lord. You have brought us joy through your Son, the Messiah, a Savior, a Savior who, who is, is Christ, Christ the King. King. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the savior reigns let all their songs employ wild fields and floods rocks hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse. Yeah.
love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love let us bless our god praise and thanks to you may god creator bless us and keep us may christ be ever light for our lives may the spirit of love be our guide and